If you want to get your music into production music libraries, you've got to know some effective ways on how to sell that music to them these days, or how are you gonna stand out from all the other submissions that they get. I'm gonna show you one of the best ways to do that in this video. For great tips on getting your music into music libraries to be placed on film and TV shows, subscribe to the Music for Income channel and hit the bell to get notified when we post a new video. My name's Michael and I've run a successful music library for the past 14 years or so now. And in this video, I wanna to talk to you about how you get a music library to listen to your tracks over all of the other music that they get sent after all, as a lot of composers are saying, aren't music libraries inundated with music submissions nowadays? Well, yes, our music library certainly gets a fair bunch of new composer emails each week. But there are ways to really grab the attention of those music library people and to get them excited about the music that you have to offer. Plus, here's some other good news, not many people at all are doing what we're about to talk about. I can tell you from this side of the fence, composers and music producers are making big mistakes in how they're approaching us music libraries. So in this video, I wanna help you not to make those same mistakes so that you can easily rise above the competition. So let's get into it. In approaching a music library, you're looking to sell them on why they should add your tracks to their library. Now, I know you might not like the term selling, but if you want them to consider your music over other people's, you're going to have to sell it to them. It's fine to hear those people who say, oh, the music should sell itself, of course. And to an extent, yes, it should. But it can't do that if people aren't even clicking on the links that you're sending them. So let's break this down. Here are the steps that you need to get a music library staff member to take. One, click on and read your email. Now, check out my video on writing great emails to music libraries. I'll put the link up on the screen now. You need to avoid the usual pitfalls that composers and music producers make when sending emails, or obviously you're not gonna make it past this stage. And if that's the case, it doesn't matter how good your music is, it's not gonna get listened to. Two, they need to decide to listen to your music. You see, Plenty of emails get opened, but with the screeners then never going on to click on the links to the tracks. We're gonna talk about how to have them do that essential step in this video. And three, they need to listen to their music and decide that it's great library music for them. And we'll talk about how to do that stage right at the very end of this video. So let's say they've clicked on your email now. Are they going to listen to your tracks? You've got to sell them on why that's worth their time to do so. Because of course, their time is precious. They're getting a lot of emails. So how do you sell them on this? Well, how do you sell anything to anyone? Not by being pushy, but by telling them why your tracks are going to be a great signing for them. Remember, you don't convince anyone by telling them how it's best for you you got to focus on them. So as a music library owner, what do I want? Well, I wanna sign excellent tracks that I'm as sure as possible that my TV and film clients will want to use in their shows. I basically want to represent music that the market wants. And so one more time for those in the back seats, what do libraries want? They want to represent music that the market wants. So tell me why the market wants this music of yours, and then of course, make damn sure that that's the music that you're giving them the links to. The way you tell me why the market wants this music is by telling me the current shows that use this music. You need to make me realize that shows are happening with this kind of sound on them and that you can provide that to me. Even though I'm a music library owner, I can't possibly be watching 
all of the shows around right now. So show me that you've done the research so that I don't have to. And when I say what the market wants, by the way, I don't mean what it wanted five years ago or two years ago or even last year. What music are TV editors placing in shows right now that your music could work for as well? Notice here as well that I'm talking in TV and film genre terms. And this is something that I talk a lot about in my book, Writing Music for Television. You're writing music for a show here, not some standalone piece of music that's got nothing to do with picture, TV or film or whatever. And whilst the book I've written is more about writing the score to a TV show than writing library music, it's still all about what serves the show here and the genre. So talk to me in those terms. What us libraries get sent all the time is emails that say that someone just has some piano instrumentals available or some crime drama instrumentals available or something like that. Now that's fine and it's not about those specific genres, they're just an example. But what's more inspiring than saying that in your email is telling me that you've been researching what's current right now, you've written a load of tracks in just those styles used in X or Y TV shows that you think would be really useful to people making shows just like those. So you can see it's not a hard sell, it's not about bigging yourself up, it's about making me think that you could have some music that my clients out there, the TV editors and directors, could really use over and over. I talk more about this and how to become a composer that music libraries really love in another one of my videos, which I'll put a link to here as well for you. It's definitely worth a watch in terms of becoming a Jedi master in any style that you choose to pursue. So remember, when you're sending music to music libraries, you can't just write some music that you like and send it through. It needs to be targeted for a specific usage and you need to clearly be able to define what kind of shows use the kind of music that you are writing. Now, the next step is to learn how to structure and create tracks exactly how TV editors like them. And I wanna give you three free lessons from the Library Music That Sells course to give you some industry insights in how to do just that. You're gonna hear from award-winning TV editors on what you must and mustn't do when writing library music for TV. Now, these lessons are free. Just click on the link in the comments and grab those free lessons now. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. Share it with your friends if you have anyone who might find it interesting. And also check out these other videos for more great tips on making an income from writing production music for film and TV. We'll catch you next time.